This is a kettlebell swing. I'm gonna show a couple reps and I'll break it down. So I'm gonna come here, bring it above my knees, pop, fire through the hips. And I'll just show it from the side. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit. So the kettlebell swing, ideally, at least this version, should be a hip hinge. So it's the hips coming back. Sometimes we see people squatting their kettlebell swings. Not dangerous or wrong, but it's just a different stimulus. So for the traditional kettlebell swing, we want to get the hips moving behind us. Good way to feel that, I just have a band here on a low anchor point to put around a squat rack is I'm gonna get some tension on, and then I'm gonna imagine I'm doing a kettlebell swing here where this, this band is drawing my hips backwards. See, I rock on my heels a little bit. If I squat, nothing really happens with this band. So that's the hip motion here. And then I can feel with my hands, I want a nice stable core. So I don't wanna be overly extended where my ribs are flaring. I can feel my back arching and I don't wanna be rounded, especially here at the bottom. So if you're struggling with the kettlebell swing, this can be a great drill. And then I could even progress this drill more. This helped a lot of people struggle with kettlebell swings to here. I'm gonna reach through my legs. So my hands are now through my legs here, and I have to use my hips to come up. Because if I reach to the ground, that's kind of low back and knees, it's hard to come out of there. So I'm gonna reach down without rounding and pop through. This is the kettlebell swing, just with a little extra pop of the arms. So to bring it back to the kettlebell here, what I wanna feel is I'm gonna pick this up, slightly draw the shoulder blades back, a little bend of the elbows, and then throughout the motion, I wanna keep this above my knees. So there's a number of different ways to start it. The way I find it easiest and simplest is I'm here, I'm just gonna kinda of get a little momentum with my hands, and then allow this to come between my legs. There's gonna be a point when it comes between my legs where you're gonna feel the momentum shift to come back forward, and that's the moment where you pop the hips or explode up, okay? If I go too early, then I'm kinda of all out of sync. So there's a little bit of feel, a little bit of coordination here, okay? Then with my shoulders, I like to keep my shoulders engaged back. I don't want to allow the kettlebell to kind of pull me forward here, but I also don't want to overextend. So I'm bringing this here. When I'm in this hinge position, I got a little brace. So I'm not rounding shoulders back. And then I pop up. My shoulders have a little retraction. They're here as opposed to, to there, okay? Final thing, you'll see a lot of different styles of kettlebell swings as far as height of the arms. So CrossFit popularized, what I think is now called the American kettlebell swing, where you come all the way overhead. So that's not typically the version that we do here at Evolve for a couple reasons. First, we're thinking about intent. The intent, at least for us in the kettlebell swing, is to get a nice, clean, powerful, and repetitive hip extension, building power, but also some endurance and capacity here. So from the point where my arms come from here to up, that doesn't gain me any additional hip extension, okay? We also find that up here, with any limitation of shoulder mobility, we're gonna be kind of limited, especially with my hands close, because that's kind of internal rotation. You can see I'm a little limited, that's about my range, and then I start to get into my arm back. So we just find there's not a lot of additive benefit and a little more added risk when we're coming all the way up overhead. So for us, we typically train the kettlebell swing to arms at about 90. So that's a breakdown on the kettlebell swing. Give it a shot.